Let's move on then. Hotel stocks. Well, they're in focus in light of the Cricket World Cup, which is being played in 10 stadiums around the country till November 19th. To discuss the demand trends as well as the occupancy trends, Mr. Puneet Chatpal, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Indian Hotels, joins us on the show. Good morning, Mr. Chatpal. Always good to have you on the show. Well, since we're talking about the World Cup, could you give us a sense what proportion of your overall keys gets benefited from this G20 as well as the World Cup, a proportion of your total number of keys? Well, uh, Nigel, good morning. I think uh, there is a big benefit in all the cities that the World Cup is being played, especially on the dates when you have important matches or let's put it this way, when you have uh, favorite teams playing out there, uh, there is a big uh, increase in occupancy and in rates. But having said that, I think uh, the sector per se is very well positioned in the short, medium and long term to experience this upcycle that we started a year and a half ago and keep that momentum going. Maybe it's because of World Cup, maybe because of G20, but more importantly, um, a variety of reasons which I'm happy to discuss with you. Sure, sure. Please go ahead, Puneet. Uh, what are those reasons? And if you can tell us, you know, what is the monetary implications for, uh, say, a company like yours? Um, uh, Sonia, let's uh, first talk about the sector. I think the short-term benefit uh, is coming through demand, which is outpacing supply. You know, not much supply got added during the COVID time. The demand has come back. And uh, I think the, the demand outpacing the supply will make the sector perform well. On the medium to long term, the investments in the infrastructure, as we all witnessed the Bharat Mandapam in Pragati Medan, and now the, uh, the, you know, the, the convention center in Dwarka, or be it the geo center in Mumbai, all this is creating new sources of demand that were non-existent before because we had no possibility to host up to five, 6,000 people in a single room in India. So I think um, going forward on the medium term, the infrastructure investment in convention centers, the infrastructure investments in the new airports, the infrastructure investments in the new highways creates a very good base for the hotel sector to benefit. And on the long term, one of the key uh, you know, a catalyst for improving rates and occupancies in this sector is the GDP growth. And the mm. GDP growth is expected to be stable, which means higher uh, per capita, Puneet, which means higher discretionary spend. Sure, sure. <laughs> Th that overarching theme is, I think, well documented. I just want to understand if you can tell us what are the exact rates that you're getting this quarter. And if you can compare it to the average of, say, the last three to four quarters, just trying to understand, understand the scale at which, uh, you know, the rates have gone up. See, there is a double-digit growth that we have reported in uh, Q1. And uh, talking to our colleagues uh, within the Hotel Association of India, or within the CII, National Committee on Tourism, the rates and the general revenue trends is definitely with a double-digit increase. Uh, with the wedding season and the Saya dates, you know, coming around the corner, the festival season coupled with the World Cup, we see no reason why this trend that we witnessed in the last year uh, should not continue in this year. There is nothing that makes us believe, including business on the books, that uh, we share with within our fraternity. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> Puneet, hi, good morning, Prashantia. You know, that point about the convention centre, etc., is absolutely well taken. I, you know, anecdotally, I have a friend uh, who's in the pest management uh, business, and, you know, there's a world pest a control conference which happens. I was surprised when I first heard about it. It's happening in India, uh, I think, next year for the first time. And uh, it's happening here in Mumbai. Uh, and, uh, you know, my friend was telling me that it's, it's a, thousands of people are going to come. And now that we have this, for example, as you mentioned, the Geo Convention Center, you know, it's, it's, it's possible to host these things. And the irony is that, uh, you know, the place was booked out. So they're doing it in Mumbai, but somewhere else. But... <laughs> Uh, point taken, and I think it uh, sort of bodes well for occupancies, ARRs, etc. But is that a big one? Uh, you know, because Mumbai also is a, uh, you know, a high uh, sort of room rent market, right, uh, for you. Is, is, is it a structural kind of positive, which will kind of add it a couple of basis points every year as compared to when this was not there earlier? Yes, Prashant, very right. Mumbai is the most important market for the hotel sector in India because it is the commercial capital. 
Now, with the support that we are getting from this one-off events, which will be a lot of them will be India's first, industry first, uh, being hosted in India over the next several years. I think that uh, the, the, the hotel sector is very well positioned to benefit from that. You know, and our, uh, as Sonia asked, in terms of uh, rates and occupancies, of course, we are coming from a very low base. So experiencing 10, 12, 15, 17% increase is still at a very low level. It's, you know, sub $200 in luxury sector. So I think uh, on an average, I'm not saying for Mumbai, so I think uh, there is still room for growth and uh, we will witness that growth uh, in the next quarters and years to come. Mm. You know, Puneet, I just wanted you to clarify on this. Uh, you know, some of the stadium vigils we got, they were indicating the stadiums are not very, very full. It's a little bit worrying, right? And uh, there's a big debate going on online as well. With regard to hotels, you're chock-a-block in most of those areas which are hosting uh, matches? Uh, Nigel, it's a very interesting question. You know, first time when I saw that on the opening match, even I got a bit worried. But, you know, it's not with the occupancy rates just of the stadium. It's all the people who come with the teams, uh, the whole entourage uh, and all the other activities which happen with the press uh, and the post, uh, post uh, match parties and events. I think all that together boosts the rates and uh, boosts the occupancies. And uh, as and when we progress further into the uh, in, into the middle of this month, you know, let's say 19th of October till 19th of November, as you said in your opening comment, uh, the momentum will keep going up. I think that has been, uh, you know, the it's all over the internet, right? Uh, that the stadium was absolutely, I mean, uh, was largely empty in Chennai. So these questions are pertinent as to what, where are the seats going and where are the tickets going and. Uh, I mean, what's happening? Look at it yeah. Yesterday, you know, it wasn't empty. It yes, all depends yes. on which match, which stadium, which date. And um, I think uh, as much as the first day was like a bit of a shock, uh, mm. yesterday was much more than a relief, including India winning. Absolutely. Okay, uh, let's talk about your own business then. In Q1, your margin saw a bit of a dip, right? Uh, as things are opening up, as costs are going up as well, do you think that there could be a little bit of pressure on margins? Uh, and what is the ballpark rate that you're looking at in terms of margins? Hey, Sonia, we have given a guidance under Avan 2025 of uh, achieving a margin of 33%. We remain very confident that there is no deviation, there is no dip. But when you come out of a, a once-in-a-life uh, black swan event uh, like uh, a COVID-19, then a quarter on you know quarter one of this year versus quarter one of last year, we should not look at just the percentage in isolation, and that also very few basis points. Uh, the absolute amounts were uh, were more than what we expected on the top line on the EBITDA and include including on the profit after tax. So we remain very confident that we have to support our new businesses like Cumin, like Ama, uh, like our reimagined Ginger, and we need to keep making investments and uh, without losing sight on margins. So margins will stay very healthy, will be uh, in line with what we have guided to the market. And uh, we are very focused on uh, giving the required tailwind that the new businesses need and at the same time uh, keep in line with the profitability and with the guidance that we have provided during our capital market day and to all the investor community. Puneet, I just want to clarify, you know, for this India-Pakistan game, uh, those rates that we're getting, I'm reading a couple of reports are, you'll have to watch the lobbies. I think a lot of people will be spending a lot of time out there going by the room rates. 85,000 rupees per room? Is that the average number that we uh, that we're hearing? Uh, so tell us more. I, I think we should not look at a one-off event. You know, we were also all looking at G20, but people tend to forget that the hotels were shut for normal uh, public to go into the restaurants for security reasons. And a day before the arrival and a day after the arrival, uh, the security levels were very tight. So your occupancy drops. But we were able to charge uh, you know, three to four times higher than we would normally charge. So uh, there is that kind of balance which comes in automatic, but all these events are a very, very big help 
This is not just the positioning for that one or two odd days that the game is happening. It's all those pictures that go through the entire world, which helps in the positioning of the tourism sector. It helps in the positioning of the country and all those people coming from outside into India, if they extend their stay visiting some of our wonderful spiritual destinations or yoga destinations or other uh, you know, historical sites, uh, that is what creates uh, the demand uh, that is needed uh, with very contained supply but that drives the room rates as well as the performance of the sector. Mm. Uh, Puneet, uh, just uh, one last question from my side. You know, the uh, business environment overall is looking pretty uh, solid. You uh, launched uh, the Chambers, I think, uh, a couple of years back, I think in F521. Uh, has, what's the traction there? I mean, how many members are you adding? What's the total? What's the target? Uh, and, and what's the potential here, according to you? Prashant, it's a very interesting question. Chambers was launched almost more than 40 years ago. But what we have done is we have taken Chambers to a very different level and made it a global platform. So we opened the Chambers in Dubai. We opened the Chambers in London. Uh, recently, we announced a hotel in Frankfurt, which will also have a Chambers. Uh, we are opening the renovated chambers in Taj Land's End uh, uh, in seven days' time. And we are launching a brand new chambers in West End uh, in Bangalore uh, in another couple of weeks. So uh, I think the entire chambers as a private membership club proposition across the globe, uh, our ambition or aspiration is to get to 15, which means adding three more, maybe, maybe one in New York. Uh, this is very, very good. This is a very good trend uh, in private membership club. Of course, it is by invitation. It's not that easy to get uh, the chamber's membership for uh, for anyone. Uh, we have a very, uh, you know, very select, a very strong selection process for chamber's membership. And um, yes, at the current level, we have more than 3,000 members. And we expect this to keep growing as we keep adding uh, chambers in new destinations. Okay, all right, Puni. Thanks a lot for joining in and giving us a check on how occupancies are shaping up, how room rates are shaping up, and a reality check, actually. If people are paying 85,000 rupees <laughs> wow. per night for the India-Pakistan match on the 14th, well, some die-hard cricket fans over there. Uh, so let's see how that one goes. But thanks a lot, Puni, for joining in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, that's Indian Hotels telling us about uh, what's happening on the ground.